2011, Ecclesia Muskogee gathered for worship together for the very first time. We met in a little house in Phoenix Village in the back room that at that time we called it the dojo because it looked like a little karate dojo as far as we knew. We gathered there and I think there were 18 people who first gathered for worship. It was Good Friday, but there were really just eight of us who were a part of that foundational team, the core members of planting this local church. From the beginning, one of the things that we wanted to be as a local body of believers is a church that cared about being biblical more than anything else. We wanted to say, what does the scripture say concerning what we should be and what we should do as a local body? And then let's do that. So we wanted to get back to sola scriptura, scriptures alone. And one of the verses that was really key for us at the very beginning when we planted was when Jesus says in Matthew 16, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. From the outset, we wanted to say, how does, what does Jesus do when he builds his church? What, what does it look like to plant a church in Muskogee, Oklahoma, where there are 130 or more other local churches? To plant one and from the foundation just say, what does Jesus say? And let's organize and do what the scriptures say. So Jesus will build his church. How does he want his church built? And really, for the, the past 10 years, that's all we've been trying to do is search the scriptures and see and change. If we need to change something, we change it. If we need to do something differently, we do it differently because we're convinced in the word. When we planted, some people were asking friends of ours, so are they like really hip and new? And I think they're emergent. It's, you know, the emergent church was still something that people talked about in 2011, like Rob Bell and different churches like that. They're saying, we're reimagining the way we do church. And I remember one of my friends told me that when someone asked him that, he just said, no. He said, they're, they're trying to be orthodox. They're trying to just get back to what the scripture says a local church should be and do. And the primary focus of what the local church should be and do is preach Christ and Him crucified. That's what we've sought to do. From that very first Good Friday that we met, 18 of us with only eight foundational people. And then now, we're, we just gathered for our Good Friday worship again not too long ago and had over, I don't know, 130 people that were there gathering for worship on Good Friday. Just through the simple message of preaching Christ crucified. And like Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. So right here where I just pulled up is 515 West Oak Mulgee Avenue. And this is where we met for worship for about seven and a half years. It's a little storefront building. We met here as long as we possibly could until the Lord had grown us so that we couldn't meet here anymore and we needed to get a bigger building to meet in for worship. This is a special place for me. Many people that I love have been baptized in this building. And many people have come to faith in this building and grown in this building as we gather together to worship. So 515 West Oak Mulgee Avenue, that's where we moved before the building that we're in now, the church building we're at. 
We were here at 515 West Oak Mulkey. Many people wouldn't come and visit us on Sundays because they thought it was too strange and weird that we would gather in a building like that. Uh, one person actually said, did you guys see that new Muslim church that's on Oak Mulkey? First of all, Muslim church, that's, that doesn't, that's not a thing. But because our name is Ecclesia, which means church, uh, I guess they just assumed that we were Muslims. Before we were at that building for our Sunday worship, we met right here at the Civic Center. We met here for two or three months because we didn't have anywhere else to go. The house that we were meeting in was too big or too small for the group that was meeting there. I think one week we had 40 people shoved into a living room. And so then we came and we figured out the Civic Center would let us rent a room out. So we started doing that. It was at that time when a man named James Hickman reached out to me through a mutual friend and he lives in Eufaula, Oklahoma. He reaches out and he wants to connect because he wants to work to plant a church in Eufaula that is Reformed, Baptist, and will be a healthy, elder-led church sticking to the truth of the gospel, preaching Christ crucified in Eufaula. So when we're at the Civic Center, James and I connect. We become friends. He and his wife, Crystal, and their children, they become members of the church. And then James and I start meet, meeting every week in order to work towards and see if he is qualified and we do want to appoint him to be a fellow pastor of Ecclesia Muskogee. And then, Lord willing, send him and a core group of people to plant a church down south. So for a few years, James is with us, and we're meeting regularly, discussing. is very informal, but me and him mostly just having lunch every week, one-on-one, -on -one, talking through, and then me and him and Pastor Nate Yarbrough, who would meet. And finally, we felt confident that James was ready to be appointed as an elder alongside of us. So I don't know how many years ago that was now, maybe seven that we appointed James as a fellow pastor. And then about a year or so later, we sent him and some of the people that were a part of Ecclesia Muskogee down south, and they planted a church in the Shakota Eufaula area. Shakota first is where they met, and then they ended up finding a building and meeting in Eufaula, Oklahoma. And they've been called Ecclesia Eufaula for the past five or so years that they've been meeting there. And they're, uh, they're about to change their name to Grace Bible Church in Eufaula. So that name will be changed and they want to plant the flag there and be very clear with everyone what they believe and what they're about. And now, James Hickman and Eric Cross are both pastors there of that local body. Eric plugged into Ecclesia, what at that time Ecclesia Shakota, which is now Ecclesia Ufala, about to be Grace Bible Church Ufala. Eric plugged in down there, and then he started coming up to our pastoral training, our elder training that we were doing in Muskogee. So he was with us for a while with me and some of the other guys who were doing pastoral training, which started six and a half years ago. Eric was in that, and then he completed his pastoral training with Pastor James Hickman down in Ufala. So now they're marching forward, holding the banner, preaching Christ crucified, expositing the scriptures, loving the saints, and reaching out to other people so that sinners may be saved and the saints may grow and be sanctified. And now doing that in Ufala. So Ecclesia Muskogee's existed now for 10 years, and by God's grace, he's already planted another church out of Ecclesia Muskogee, and we're now able to release them a few years ago, and they became an autonomous church, so they're not connected to us 
in any way other than we are in the bond of fellowship with one another and we have we're sister churches we encourage one another and seek counsel from one another that's just a testimony of God's grace of what he's done the past 10 years saving sinners sanctifying his saints people who've never really had a healthy church to belong to have plugged in and we're seeing fruit all the time from that we hope to plant more churches someday as well it's just interesting to me to look back on the last 10 years and see what the Lord has done and how he has built his church and now we've added another pastor to our um, elder team at Ecclesia Muskogee with Brandon Allen who when he first came to the church was kind of bummed that the the church that he found that was preaching the scriptures he was bummed that it, we were Calvinistic like, well I wasn't really looking for a reformed church but they're preaching the Bible okay we're in this we're about this we want to be somewhere that the Word of God is preached so Brandon and Joanna six years ago plugged in going on six years and then Brandon ended up coming to pastoral training to elder training and was in that for over three years and then Nate and I appointed him as a pastor so now Brandon is one of my pastors it's just crazy for me looking back at starting in a house moving to the Civic Center moving to then a little storefront building and we're there for seven or eight years and then finally moving into a church building and doing a lot of work on that and every time we've moved places God has brought growth sinners have been saved new saints have plugged in and been able to worship with us and be a part of a community group and be on mission with Jesus and his people being a part of a covenant community and this place that I'm pulling up to right now is the very first house that we met in it's over here in Phoenix Village and this is a special house for me just because this is where we started meeting for worship uh, one of our community group leaders Chase Huggins was he grew up kind of going to church and grew up being religious but wasn't born again and he met Pastor Nate Nate invited him to come and when we were still meeting in this house Nate invited him to come Chase started gathering with us for worship and then plugged into a community group and God saved him God saved him when we were meeting in this house and now meeting a girl getting meeting Jesus and then meeting another girl who's a part of the church Alyssa they're now married with their third child on the way and they lead and shepherd a community group that meets in Shakota Oklahoma when I think of that house I think of Chase first coming and see his face light up when he understood the gospel and God caused him to be born again and he's a, another testimony of God's grace. the word says who cares if the world and if sinners think it's boring if there's nothing really that attractive and the truth is there is nothing attractive to the flesh about Christ and him crucified it's folly to Greeks it's foolishness it's a stumbling block to the Jews to religious people it's 
foolishness to spiritual people, but to those who are called. The word of the cross is the power of God and the wisdom of God. When you just ordinarily give yourself to preaching the word, doing what the word says, despite what anybody else says, Jesus will build his church. year or so that we met for worship for our benediction on Sundays we would all say Ephesians 3 20 and 21 together and this is I think encapsulates or shows a good picture of what the last 10 years of Ecclesia Muskogee have looked like we've just been trying to be obedient we've failed in a lot of ways but we're seeking to be obedient to Jesus, to our King who bled and died and arose and ascended and is interceding for us. We're trying to be obedient to Him, and He has built His church. Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to Him be glory through Christ Jesus and the church throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. So what, what has God done in you, to you, through you, via His local church, Ecclesia Muskogee? Through preaching, through worship, through Bible studies, through different ministries that we do, through abortion mill ministry, how has God blessed you through, not through me, but through Ecclesia Muskogee, his local church that he purchased with his own blood? I encourage you to think about that and think the last 10 years what Jesus has done to build his church. What has, how has he blessed you? How has he blessed you through Ecclesia? Because he loves his church. He's blessed me personally. Just being able to be a part of a church body that wants to do what Jesus says no matter the cost. There have been many changes that we've had to make because we read something in scripture that we're not doing. And we need to change. We need to repent. We need to do what Jesus says. And a majority of the people that have been involved, that have been members of the church, they've said, all right, let's go. And we've had, we've made changes to try to be more biblical as far as we understand the scriptures. And we've had people leave. We've tried to not shy away from the hard things. We've had people leave. But a majority have said, let's do what the Bible says. Let's do what Jesus says. Give me the unadulterated word of God. And let's strive forward and ask God for help. And be obedient to what he says in the scriptures. been blessed by just being a part of a church that wants to do what Jesus says and doesn't really care what the world thinks about it or what their flesh thinks about it. And I would be a member of this church even if I wasn't one of the pastors. I am a member of this church. I'm a member of this body. And I thank God for all of you. We planted in 2011 with eight foundational people, zero kids, and this day, late April 2021, Jesus has built his church through saving sinners and through bringing saints into fellowship. He's built his church to where we now have 80 children that are involved 
most of them which are in covenant member families. And we have 76 adult covenant members in this church. With about 100 adults that are involved. Our first time we gathered for worship, there were 18 of us, I believe. This past Sunday in April 2021, there were 140. Nothing flashy, nothing showy. Preach the word, see the word, sing the word, obey the word, and Jesus builds his church. 